Today's voiceover talent is more than just a pretty voice. Today's voiceover talent has to be a boss, a VO boss. Set yourself up with business owner strategies and success with your host, Ann Ganguza, along with some of the strongest voices in our industry. Rock your business like a boss, a VO boss. We have a cool brand. Isn't it great to be working with a brand that you love? We have some really awesome tees. We've got some great mugs. The t-shirts are really incredible. Just fun stuff that you guys can get your hands on to get out there and show your bossness to the world. That's right. Proclaim your bossness. Go to VOBoss.com and just click on the shop tab. So simple. And now, on with the show. Welcome, everybody, to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Anne Ganguza, along with my superpower VO Bossy, Gabby Nistico. Hey, Gabby. Hi. But would, wait, <laughs> wouldn't that make me your sidekick? <laughs> I guess so. Superpower sidekick? Mm, yeah. yeah. I love that. Hell yeah. I'll be the Robin hey. to your Batman. Okay. So my entrepreneurial superpower is adaptation. No way. Me too. <laughs> I read your mind. I knew what you Super were going to say. So yeah, let's let's talk about adaptation and why it is so important for your business. You know what? Because at the end of the day, we really are Clark Kent in a damn phone booth. We are like, <laughs> that is the epitome of adapting. Like I have to get out of these clothes and I have to transform myself right now because I got to go deal with saving the world again. There you go. <laughs> Entrepreneurs are absolutely the masters of <laughs> change on so the true. fly on the, especially small business owners right i mean look we don't have time <laughs> to get upset we don't have time to get emotional we don't have time to wallow in the corner and cry because isn't something that the truth? isn't working we don't whine we don't moan we move the f- on <laughs> and you know why and you know what the biggest motivator for me is what i gotta make money i gotta pay the bills right damn it like that's it that's what's so cool in a way like we become so we become like so fast at adapting and, and adjusting because i have to i have to pay the mortgage at the end of the month right or i've got to buy the groceries i've got to do whatever i'm doing that has to be paid with money. So if I'm not evolving and adapting, guess what? <laughs> I can't be crying um, because I'm not making money. In an ideal world, things would give us notice and we would have time and we would be able to assess the situation and, and, and price compare and shop and determine the best possible thing to do. No, that's not reality. That is not how it happens. Things break. People let us down. Systems fail. Oh, they do. Technology decides to take a dump right when we need it to not. (laughs) (laughs) I have a great example, too. (laughs) And so we have no choice but to immediately switch gears. Here's the thing that I think is fascinating about this and, and, and also something I love. And it's, it goes back to what you just said about, right, I have to pay the bills. I'm motivated by the money. I sure am. <laughs> People are really fond of saying it's it's my family that drives me, right? I work so I can provide for everybody and I work so that I can, I can take care of my responsibilities. The coolest thing about an entrepreneur is that we are our top responsibility. We mm. put us First, it falls squarely on us. And we we literally go, no, you know what? I love me enough that I need to fix this right now so that this doesn't cause me pain later and I don't have a major uh, breakdown or a loss of income or some right. other, you know, crazy thing. We, we put us as the responsibility first. And I think that's amazing because most people don't do that. It's always like, oh, well, my kids, my spouse, when, you know. <laughs> when you're working for the man, so to speak, yeah. right? When you're totally. working for the man, where, you know, who, where, where do your priorities lie? Yeah. Right. And I think that's one of the one of the most beautiful things about being an entrepreneur is that you are your own boss. It is you that you are taking care of. And I have had, gosh, Gabby, a multitude of 
of <laughs> experiences where I'd had to turn around. You know, probably the biggest one, I bring this up because it, it was such a critical factor in my career, was mm-hmm. when I was diagnosed, Gabby, with, with oh, cancer. And yeah. that was like the biggest, like, oh my God, at the pinnacle of my career. When I was like, but no, I... <laughs> No, this is not the right time. This is, you know, I just reached this other echelon of, of moving up in my career. And, and no, um, I had to make such quick changes. And I'll tell you what, Gabby, if I had not been so practiced <laughs> in having to evolve and adapt from my previous years, it could have been some really bad news for me. Even with decent health insurance, <laughs> the monetary responsibility that I needed to pay as a result of my health crisis was huge. And had mm-hmm. I not been able to prepare for that in my previous years, in my previous adaptive <laughs> adaptability, um, I would have been, woof, I, I'd shudder to think. I shudder to think. There's there's a weird piece of me that worry that well worries in a past tense. But if you hadn't sort of used business brain in your approach to cancer, and how you went about adapting, changing, evolving, and sort of just going okay, but this is what we're doing next, would you still be here? Yeah. Would well. the would the fight in you have been there? Would it have been enough? to get you through it. You mean be here in the voiceover industry or I mean literally be with us. Yeah. yeah you know? Because sometimes it can be that big a deal. Like if yeah. people don't have that fight, if they don't have that ability to move quickly. I mean, I know this from personal experience. I've had this happen where uh, you know, someone got a diagnosis and it was like denial. Mm-hmm. I'm yes. this isn't happening. This isn't yeah. real. This isn't going on. And and so they kind of shove their illness, you know, under the rug mm-hmm. and well, guess what? They're not here anymore. Yeah, They're not good with us. Point, Gabby. It's a good point. It was too late. By the time mm-hmm. they were willing to take action, the illness was too far gone. So, so that's sort of how I see it. You know, that adaptability is fast moving. Wow, thank you, Gabby. That just you just got me like I'm. I'm a little um, emotional right here Aww. because you know what? I mean, honestly, that that is. Ugh, that's really a thing. I, I, I often is. thought I often thought that, you know, afterward, if I were to do anything to help people or to talk about, you know, my experience with cancer, it would be to not put your head in the sand and to just take totally. action and to be proactive. And I think that <laughs> you're right. Maybe that really served me well in my business. My business experience served me well in my health crisis and my health crisis served me well in my business. Wow. I just got chills. That was like an epiphany. <laughs> <laughs> but I see it this way too. Your husband as well. I mean, I know mm-hmm. he's got a hell of a business brain, right? You're both used to that. Yeah. Sometimes people marvel at, at me and my husband and the same thing, like how quickly we just shift a gear, like, go, okay, this is now what has to happen. And they're like, man, how do you guys do that? And we're like, because you know what? Now is not the time. This yeah. is not the time to cry. This is not the time to fold. We don't curl up on the couch and hide under the blankie. We got to do this first. Right. And then we there'll be can, time for that later. Yes, if you need we to. can <laughs> totally sit there and yeah. eat ice cream in our PJs exactly. and watch, you know, the the notebook later. Yeah. Which, yeah. by the way, really funny. My husband loves the notebook. I freaking hate it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. He gets all teary eyed. And I'm <laughs> like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I, I, all right. I love that movie. <laughs> Good. Oh, my God. That's too cute. You two can watch the notebook <laughs> together. Jerry and I will go watch, like, you know, Bruce Willis blow something up. Okay. This is a different episode now. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Back on track. Back to adapting. Yes. I just talked about a major life event, which really, yeah. it, it's so interesting what an huge. epiphany that was. Right. That was huge. But let's just talk about, like, things on any given day, right? Mm-hmm. I So I also had the experience where I had an, en- an audio engineer that was, you know, processing files for me and who happened to have kind of a, an emotional meltdown in the middle of it all after I was I had promised a client that I would have the files to them on a certain date and so all of a sudden I was left without an audio engineer so what do you do how do you handle it how do you prepare for these things Gabby yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be able to say oh of course you prepare for them you do and you <laughs> don't and what I mean by that is on one hand okay you prepare in the sense that as a good entrepreneur you are always looking for backups mm. you don't ever see anything or anyone as permanent that kind of pains me a little bit like when I think of my staff because I love them but 
nothing is permanent. Everyone will at some point move on from their business relationship with you. Clients are not permanent. Support staff isn't permanent. Uh, vendors, nothing. So as you go through the systems and the things that become the lifeblood, like the circulatory system of your business, you're always kind of like, oh, I should remember that. Oh, maybe I'll make a little note about this person. Oh, right. This guy over here also does this thing. Just so you have answers should something happen. You never want to dismiss somebody. I find that to be a very big thing. Like, it's easy to dismiss. It's easy to go, oh, no, you, you edit audio? No, I have an editor. He's great. And I love, no, I, I don't need, <laughs> yes. never. Always have a backup. Never, never. Well. It never fails that the person you dismiss is then the one that you're crawling to in a couple months going, hey, so remember when I <laughs> said I'd never need you? Hi. You know, I, I think, Gabby, that goes along with the number one rule in technology is to always have a backup. Do you have a backup plan for, let's say that your computer goes kaput one day and you need to record something, you know, in the next hour for your client? Do you have a backup in place? So let's address like what happened with you, with your editor. You knew immediately that you had multiple people, including me, that you could reach out to and go, I need a solution and I need it now. Thankfully. Yes, right. I did. I did. And it was actually a relatively painless, easy kind of fix because you were able to, you poached my editor. That's what happened. I did. I, did. <laughs> I, went, I went frantically screaming to you, Gabby, yeah. oh my God, but, something but horrible easy happened. Fix. Yes. Yeah, easy fix. So with tech and with equipment, I think your ability to adapt is relative to the amount of money in your bank account versus the amount of planning that you have done. And this is really important for people to understand. If you have the money for unexpected expenses, if you have the safety net, the savings account, then not so bad, mm -hmm. right? Like it's yeah. an easy solution. I have to overnight a piece of gear. I have to yep. go and buy something right this freaking minute, even though I don't want to, but I've, just, I've had well, that happen many a time. Okay. I'm going to say if you can try to plan for that. I think that that, that should be something over the years in your business, you should plan for backups, at least a secondary place or secondary yeah. equipment. Absolutely. And, and when you can afford it, you need to make that commitment to make the investment. Bingo. Part of it is going, I've, I've got the time. I have a little bit of extra cash. Do I really want to buy a second interface? Well, no. No one really mm -hmm. wants to buy a second interface, but should I? Yeah. My interface is, is a thousand bucks. It's the Apollo Twin. I don't have a spare Apollo Twin kicking around. Well, right. Stupid. <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with getting a, a you know, a backup version. No. What I mean, use your travel version for your backup, maybe, right? Whatever it is. I have other options in mm -hmm. the studio. But if I didn't have those already, I would just go out and buy like a two hundred dollar or under USB interface. Absolutely. Hook it up, test it, it works. Yep. Okay, great. You're just gonna sit here for when. It's not if guys, right. it's when. It's when. <laughs> because ultimately it will happen. I'm telling you. And your third backup, right? Your <laughs> third backup is a studio in which you can go to in the event of an mm -hmm. emergency. Yes, that's just the smart planning, right? Yep. That's just mm -hmm. the know your environment, know your options, know where you can go, who you can go to, even if it's another voice actor. Yeah. I have four different people that I could call in an immediate Hail Mary, oh my God, I need your help. <laughs> in a Hail Mary moment. They would gladly open up their studio to me and be like, yeah, Gab, come on in. Let's, let's do this. Let's knock this thing out. Exactly. And now, what are you going to do? Here's another one. Not just equipment failure, right? That could be computer. That could be interface. That could be microphone. That could be whatever. What about mm -hmm. internet? What about the internet? When your internet <laughs> provider goes down, do you have a secondary connection? I do. I've dealt with it. I had it happen just this past year, right? So I had almost a week that I didn't have stable functioning internet. I knew every business within a 10 mile radius of me mm -hmm. that I could go to, where if need be, I could sit there and camp out and in essence create a mobile office 
Yes. To be able to to work and not be kicked out. I know where the co-op workspaces are, the cooperative workspaces are in my immediate area. So I could always go to one of those if I had to and pay like a day rate to get mm-hmm. into a suite. And you could have your iPhone as a hotspot. That's Boom. the other one, you know, yep. the hotspot phone, because yep. that was actually the one I didn't have in place. Oh, and that's great to have in place. Now I have it. Especially if there are internet outages and you are depending on your internet provider to, you know, resolve the issue. Right. And there is up and down and, you know, oh, it's up today and it's down tomorrow. So always being able to switch on the fly through a uh, phone hotspot is really like that has saved me more than I can't even tell you how many times that has saved me. The title of this episode or, or what we're talking about, you, you could call it preparedness, I guess. Mm-hmm. Some people would see it as being a good Boy Scout. But no, I really do think that adaptability is what's so key. Well, I think you're prepared. I think you prepare as much as you can for those things right. that you know. And for those things that you don't know, then you need adaptability. And what's what's the old expression, right? It's expect the best, prepare for the worst. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I'll tell you, this is funny because this one happened to me very recently. Really the uh, the catalyst for this episode. For those of you who have followed our podcast and are fans, you have heard me many times sing the praises of FreshBooks, my accounting software. Ah, uh, yes. Right? You guys have heard me like uh, go on and on and on about this thing and how much I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, well, this I know what happened. And it happened very abruptly. There was sure no did. warning. They had made some platform upgrades. They had switched a bunch of things. They had made a bunch of improvements. Well, here, here's the thing. I tried the new platform. I really wasn't digging it. Then I received an email letting me know that in 30 days... <laughs> My account was going to cease to exist and be mitigated over to their new version, which I hated, and with a significant rate increase. Yep. A rate increase that was almost 50%. So this this piece of technology, this website subscription was like my lifeblood. I'm in this thing so many times in a day. I'm constantly using it to deal with accounts receivable, accounts payable, check on, uh, you know, outstanding invoices, uh, look at sales figures, numbers. In that moment, it was like somebody took my arm off. Yeah. I called my accountant. My accountant and I had a consult about zero, which is a, another similar type of program. However, it's built in a way that's a little bit more compliant for the IRS and specifically for accountants. So a little bit more complicated than I was used to. Turns out it was only going to cost me $14 a month to upgrade my zero package and be able to switch over to that. And there you go. And it took us, it actually took three months to mitigate. It was not possible in the 30 days. I contacted FreshBooks and I explained this to them and I said, look, I need an extension. They gave me a two-month extension at the rate I was paying. So I no longer use FreshBooks. I'm still very sad. (laughs) (laughs) There's a lot of people that are very sad, but that will happen. And you know what? I think that that's another great piece of advice is not just your equipment hardware. You should always have backups. And I'm going to talk to you about websites (laughs) If if I haven't said it a hundred trillion times before, you must, must, must have a backup of your website on your local computer or locally somewhere or in your cloud, where whatever it is, have your web designer do it, have your hosting provider do it, create that backup. You must have it because if for whatever reason your web designer decides to disappear Mm -hmm. or your hosting provider decides to... (laughs) Up your prices, which I'll tell you what, mine did, and I ended up leaving that platform as Mm. well and had to adjust and adapt. There's a point in time where no matter how much you love a product or how convenient the service is, you really stop and you have to go, wait a second, what am I paying for now? It may or may not make sense. And that's the position I found myself in with FreshBooks. And I wanted to keep them, but I couldn't justify it. 
And you know what else? This really leads in a nice segue into our industry is evolving. You mm. also need to adapt and evolve with the industry. There are things happening in this industry that none of us like, that we might want to go in the corner and cry mm -hmm. and, and say, no, 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 and it's I can't make a living anymore. But honestly, guys, you have to keep your eyes open. And I say this multiple times, keep your eyes open to what's happening in the industry and evolve and adapt and change with it. Because otherwise, you're going to be left in the dust. And this won't be a career for you. It will be a hobby at best. Really, really stellar point. For as many people as I see on social media right now, just wah, 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 yeah. and boo-hooing about the pay-to-play climate and all of that nonsense, I know just as many voice actors who were like, well, okay, here's what we're going to do. Yeah. And they canceled their subscriptions, and they basically said sayonara to pay-to-play. Mm -hmm. They switched some things around. They they adapted. Yep. And yet they're doing perfectly fine. And everybody's like, pay-to-play pay what? Who? What, yeah. what are we talking about this? Super What's the issue? Super power, guys. Super power. And, and you have it. Mm -hmm. You have you it. You have it. We all do. You may be too emotionally tied at that moment to see it. And that's it. You just have to kind of remove your yourself take the emotions out of it if you can put your business britches on <laughs> put your big business britches on exactly Ooh, i like that that's a new quote put your, put put your, your big, big business britches on <laughs> bitches your boss undies <laughs> Put your big boss panties on. <laughs> Put your big boss panties on. Because you guys, it is entirely possible. I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor, IPDTL. We love, love, love IPDTL. How much do we love IPDTL, Gabby? We All really the do. loves. All the time. All, All the, the love. love. All the feels. You can find out more at IPDTL.com. For all things Boss, guys, check out all the socials that you're already on, VOBoss.com, which is our website. And this is super cool. We're on iHeart now. Yay! Yay! You can listen so to us on iHeart. <laughs> yeah, we've got, so let's see, we're on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Spotify iHeart, and now I heart. Yeah. Yay. So lots and lots of ways you can get your boss fix. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Join us next week for another edition of P.O. Boss with your hosts, Anganguza and Gabby Nistico. All rights reserved. Anganguza voice talent in association with Three Moon Media. Redistribution with permission. Coast to coast connectivity via IPDTL.